Welcome stranger. It's been a few weeks. I'm behind on my videos and I'm behind on my camera repairs and I don't know what to do. But uh, anyway, I'm at a halfway point on a Nikon FE2 that I've been working on. Customer sent it to me a couple of months ago, which shows you how far I'm behind. And uh, I don't know, did I say it was locked up? It's locked up. Took it down. It was the uh, shutter. Uh, fixed the problem. Went ahead and replaced the foam seals. Um, what? Lubrication adjustments, which are normal. And now it's time to uh, reassemble the camera and ship it back to the customer. And now also is a good time to make a video for those of, um, for those, uh, for film buffs out there that want to see the inside of an FE2. I'm going to make this video now and let's get started. All right. Let's, uh, look here, we're recording. Yeah, we're recording. Let's switch cameras here. Go to this right here. No, we don't want to look at that. Top cover. I always like starting with the top cover. And how come it's not switching? Maybe I need that. Um, I'll get straightened out here in a minute. I haven't made uh, videos in a few weeks and I'm a little bit rusty. Here's the top cover. As you can see, it's in excellent shape. When I'm working on cameras, I tend to not um, look at uh, the shape of the camera. I'm looking at, uh, let's go down this over here. I'm looking at uh, what's wrong with the camera and how to fix it. There's some brassing right here on the corner, and this top cover is brass. It's not uh, laminated plastic like the X700 I worked on a week or so ago. And uh, I don't see any more dings or brassing, which is really good for a camera of this age. I wouldn't mind owning this one. It's really clean. The, uh, let's go to the top here. A lot of these old cameras, the uh, flash connector up here would be bent and uh, lopsided. I always hate that. But this one's clean. Nothing's hit it. No scratches along here or here. Really good shape. Inside, there's uh, your uh, flash connectors. There's uh, four of them. One, two, three, four contacts. I don't know why the Nikon has so many contacts on their flashes. Um, 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 what? Nothing really to add. A lot of uh, cameras get along just with two. Nikon has four. I know that the flash is fully automatic. Adjust um, the flash strength and uh, for the distance. I don't know if the distance is controlled by the um, focus or if it's controlled by the flash itself. Maybe it looks out to see how far the subject is away. I should know, but I don't, uh, I don't research this stuff. I'm a camera repairman. I uh, don't make videos for a living. I don't have the information. There's a lot of men out there. Um, I say men, there's a lot of uh, video makers out there and they know all about these cameras and all of it, but that's because they've read all the articles and read all the manuals and they know every fact that they don't know how to repair them but they know all the specs and uh, what everything does, but I don't. But anyway, I'm rambling. Rambling happens when you get my age. Okay, here's the uh, base plate. People that uh, watch my videos say, why does the always show the base plate is boring? Well, because the history's here. The base plate is where your history's at. Because that's what the camera sits on. It's been sitting on for 50 years. And as you can see, I got one little Something here, the paint knocked off. A few dings. Turn the light here, you can see them. There's one, there's one. And uh, no brassing at the edges. And that's your history. And that's telling you this camera hasn't been used much. Or at least hasn't been abused. It's been taken care of. It might have been in a case, but then again, I just, when I'm judging it, I'm assuming it has not been in a case. Even a camera that's been in a case has to be taken out to change the film. So, the base plate is your history. If you're going to buy a camera, you look at the base plate. I should make a video on how to buy a camera and what to look for. Maybe one of these days. Okay, next is the mirror cage. But before we get to the mirror cage, let's look at this. Oh, here. This uh, 
cover and goes over the front of the uh, mirror cage. It's uh, nothing particularly special about it, but what I wanted to show you was these contacts right, I'll get it here, right here. Those contacts are special. The uh, FM and FE don't have these. And what that is, is they go against and make contact with this right, let's try it over here, back and forth. Yeah, okay, with this uh, resistor board here. And as you change your f-stop on your lens, this uh, resistor board here tells you, the rest of the camera, the circuit, what uh, f-stop you're at. The uh, f-m uh, and f-e have um, a string that goes around this, goes over here, and comes over, and uh, goes to a resistor ring that's right around here. And that's how it does the same thing, but then you've got uh, wheels and pulleys and a string that can uh, go wrong. And I've seen that many times. And so they simplified the camera on the FE on the twos. And the way they did that was by just putting the resistor board not on the body. Come on. I tell you these Sony cameras, I need a better brand. Always focus problems on these macros. This um, resistor board, they put it on the uh, front of the mirror cage instead of on the body. And it made things a lot simpler. As you can see here, these uh, contacts, as you uh, change the f-stop on your lens, changes the uh, resistance that uh, goes to the camera circuit and tells the camera what uh, f-stop your lens is at. There's less problems to go wrong with this than there is the other system. So this was definitely a uh, upgrade when they went from the, uh, say the FE to the FE2, which is this one. Okay, move these out of the way and a little lesson on um, this plate here is uh, for the lens to lock on to, of course. But uh, again, when you're buying a camera, if there's a lot of uh, scratches on this right here, as they took the lenses on and off, it tells you the camera's had a lot of use. And it's a little telltale sign that you can look for on cameras is to uh, check the uh, plate that the lens locks onto. And it'll tell you. Sometimes a customer will drop a camera that has a lens on it. They may not drop it far, but it will bend this plate. But you you can't see it. It's um, I've tried, I've even put it on flat surfaces, and you, but you can't tell, it's an ever very small amount it bends. And when it bends, then when you're putting your lenses on and off, you'll notice that they're really hard to lock on and to unlock and get off, and it's because this uh, front plate here is bent. Another thing that happens if this plate gets bent is that um, the follower right here, this follower, will drag. It's supposed to be just free, but sometimes like it'll go this far and then it'll start getting hard to turn or it'll get stuck. And uh, it's, it's no, the um, base, the, um, that plate is uh, pinching it because it's not perfect uh, anymore. And uh, that's another thing. It can cause two different problems if that uh, front um, lens mount gets uh, bent slightly the f-stop follower, and uh, locking and unlocking lenses. But for normal use, you probably won't even notice, but a camera repairman will notice instantly that uh, that uh, plate needs to be replaced, and he will replace it. Like I said, you can't see it. Uh, the customer uh, probably had the um, lens on the camera and maybe set it down, you know, or knocked it off something, and it just slightly bent this plate and uh, can cause problems. So it's something to think about when you're buying a camera and checking it, seeing if the lenses lock on and off, and see if the follower is uh, moving freely. Okay. Get past that. I'm going to turn you all into camera repairmen yet. Okay, let's start. Um, 
looking at the uh, mirror cage. Start with this one over here, maybe. And uh, there we go. We um, already discussed this uh, resistor ring up here. Up here is a small window that uh, is connected to the prism, which uh, points down to your lens so you can see what f-stop you're at. I don't remember if the um, FE and FM had this or not right offhand. Might just be on the F2. I'd have to go look it up. I should know more. I know how to repair them, but I don't keep track of any stuff. Sometimes when I'm repairing, you could say, what camera are you working on? I wouldn't, couldn't even tell you. I've been doing it for 45 years. I just do it automatically. I replaced the uh, mirror bumper. Let's try it over here. Mirror bumper. Will it focus? Right here with fresh foam. The other one was nearly gone. It was just parts of it were there. It had all flaked off. Inside, use a block here, see if we can study it a little bit, is your screen. I took that out. It was clean except for one spot on it. It looked like something had splashed in there. It was round. And uh, naphtha wouldn't remove it. Water did. So maybe a drink? Um, I don't know. You know, a soft drink or something. But something splashed on it. And I cleaned that off. But the screen was in good condition, which was fine. And the mirror is in good condition, which is fine. Some people don't realize it, but the mirror on uh, SLRs is what you would say upside down. The mirrors that you have, see if I can get a better look at that. Not much. The mirrors that you have in your home, you're looking through glass and the coating's on the back. On uh, cameras, the coating is on the top and the glass is on the back. And uh, so a piece of glass you can get pretty rough with and not scratch it. But uh, this coating here is silver, and you can scratch that silver pretty easy on these SLR. you got to be real careful. Use something like cotton. And it has two photocells at the top, one here and one over here. And most cameras just have two photocells here and here. Like a Spotmatic, you'll just see the two photocells. And they're, uh, they hit the prism. So the light comes up uh, through, hits, uh, bounces off the mirror, and goes up, go, bounces off the uh, prism, and hits those photocells, and that's where you're going to get your meter reading from. This right here is your uh, speed control. Speed knob's off there right now. Pretty common in most cameras to have this set up. This was your galvanometer, the needle that you see in the viewfinder. All this uh, electronics just to, for one needle seems kind of silly, but uh, the selling point, in fact, right here, I don't know if you can see it, that's a bumper and that's a needle right next to it. It goes back and forth. Those bumpers quite often would get sticky and the uh, needle would stick to them and the customer would come in and complain that the needle was stuck and it's this little bumper here need to be cleaned with... Uh, naphtha so it wouldn't be sticky and uh, that way when the needle touched it it would not stick let's see if we can over here can we see it yeah a little better there's the bumper it's ceramic and then the needle is uh, right there camera repairmen are kind of like car mechanics we just fix we don't keep track of all this stuff. I've seen some uh, YouTubers that uh, have found uh, channels and they've read all the manuals and they've read all the articles in the camera that can tell you anything on a camera, what it does and the specs, but uh, a camera repairman can't tell you because that's it's not what we do for a living. I did back when I was in college know this stuff. I used to keep track of it, it was fun. But that was before I was a repairman. These shields here quite often get loose and come off and are not replaced. They keep light from uh, getting through. These uh, levers here on the side, um, all cameras have that. Um, 
you can look at a Spotmatic or an SRT, even though they don't have the electronics. They will have all these levers and springs here, which are nothing more than control the mirror. In fact, we might be able to trip it here. Let's see. Would it be easier on this camera? Well, uh, okay, now it's charged as if you were advancing the camera. And the way on this camera that uh, it is tripped, put a block over here, use those to kind of study my hands so I don't shake so much. When you press the reliever, you uh, push this down. And as you can see, you can see my finger now, the mirror's gone up. That's all all those levers are for, is to control the mirror. So it's released. Your uh, film is being exposed, and at the end of the exposure, the body will uh, hit a release. And on this particular camera, the release is right here. And it pushes down. When it does, the mirror flips back down. And that's all these are. And that's every camera has those. The electronics may be different, but uh, that remains the same in all of them. This right here is the uh, lever that charges yourself, your timer on your camera. It's kind of funny, even though these cameras are all these electronics, the uh, self timers stayed mechanical for the longest time, much longer than they needed to. They finally made them electronic years later. Here is a IC integrated circuit of some type. Compared to what we've got today, they were very simple inside. They didn't do much. And then up here is another IC. I never know which camera to use. I prefer being in close, but the uh, focus sometimes won't cooperate in close. Nikon IC, again, nothing compared to what we've got today. I wonder if uh, Nikon made their own ICs back then. I don't know. This uh, piece of plastic here is called a flex circuit. On the early cameras, everything was wires and, and soldered in. But in later years, they just got a piece of plastic and they mounted and embedded all the electronics into the plastic. It uh, saved time uh, producing the cameras, kept the prices down. Over here is a ceramic board. It's white, but actually it's made of glass. It's just white glass, opaque. You've got your resistors here for the repairman to make adjustments to the camera. Usually they're set fa at the factory and they don't need to be touched. You may have to adjust one for exposure. Maybe this back one here. It's either this one or this one for exposure. I've got it written down. I see written down. I've got it on the computer. And occasionally I'll have to refer to my computer to uh, see where things are. This right over here is your ASA board, which is on the uh, left side of the camera, controlling the SA that goes to the circuit. All pretty basic. And that pretty much is the mirror cage. And now we can move on to the uh, body. Okay, we are recording. Let's get started. There's the body, which I usually save for last. And uh, put this block under it so it doesn't shake so much. This um, FM2, this is an FE2, sorry, has uh, the same modular design on the shutter as the um, FE and FM, the earlier models. And that the shutter is here in this block here. And the mechanism that controls it is over here. It's all one unit. You've got a screw over here and a screw over here, which uh, you undo. Then you've got one back here. And you undo those three screws. And the whole thing just lifts out. And it's one unit. It's very nice uh, unit for repairmen. Most repairmen do not repair these. They just replace them. They just... Uh, or they did back in the day when they could order a new one. And uh, the two models, FM2, FE2, were a good idea, but um, it didn't fly. These um, cameras have a shutter speeds of uh, 2,000 and 4,000. And the uh, earlier models, 
only had it went up to 1000 and it sounded great but uh, what they didn't figure on I'm gonna switch to this over here was this shutter here this shutter I forget they advertised it was it? maybe it was titanium very thin metal and it did not give it just when if you bent it it was bent and it was delicate as a butterfly and what would you use 2004 anyway in 4000 probably uh, car races maybe an air show it uh, just was not very useful those two shutter speeds you'd rarely use them and what you did is you sacrificed uh, the safety of your camera and your shutter by having this in here because this shutter would bend very easily and uh, would have to be sent in for repair. I know because I replaced many, many, many of these shutters that were damaged by the customers. And I can't think of any other camera that um, had that I had to replace so many shutters as in this particular model right here. Okay. And I don't need those in there. This um, shutter, you can see, is exposed here. And here's how it happened. When the customer loaded film into the camera, the film leader would get caught in these blades. They're each separate. Possibly the tip of the leader would get caught in there, and when the customer pulled the leader out, it would bend the blades. The other thing they do is when they were loading it, they were touching the film, and they would slip and uh, press the shutter, or maybe press the film against the shutter and bend it. And once you bent these uh, blades, the, the game was over. The camera still might work, but then you would possibly get light leaks and also the blades that were bent would eventually uh, destroy themselves because they were so delicate in the, as they went up and down. And so the customers would bring these in quite often with the damaged uh, shutter blades. And I, like I said, I saw a lot of them during the... Uh, I don't know, when was this camera made? 70s, 80s? And um, I would have to, uh, some shops would just replace the whole module. In other words, this right here, the whole thing. Um, and they wouldn't try to fix the blades. I mean, well, you can't fix them, but I mean, they wouldn't replace them. You could order the blades separately, but um, Replacing these blades uh, takes a lot of time. I uh, took these blades out and uh, inspected them and put them back in. It took a whole afternoon because you've got to go real slow and be very careful. But uh, most shops, um, time is the name of the game. They need to get the camera fixed and get it out. And so what they would do is just order a whole shutter module and charge that to the customer. And the shutter module might cost uh, half what the camera was worth. Very expensive part. The heart of the camera too so these blades uh, constantly got damaged when the customers were putting film on the camera the cameras would come to the shops we would have to replace these shutters and it ended up costing the customer and there's i can't think of any other camera that had this problem only the fe2 and fm2 probably the fa i think the fa's got the same setup but uh it was like i said uh, Shutter speeds of 2,000 and 4,000 sounds great, but uh, the risk, it's just not worth it. Plus the fact that uh, shutter speeds such as 2,000 and 4,000, those are the first shutter speeds you're going to get that lose as the camera begins to get um, wear and age because they are so fast that uh, they've got to be exact on the money. And only the um, cameras that came out of the factory that were new, would the shutter speeds be accurate? When they finally got to my shop and they were worn several years and I put them on the tester, they had uh, changed. And they were no longer accurate anyway. So what else here did I want to show you? Pull this over here. Focus is uh, doing well today. If you look here, you'll see a ball bearing race. This is uh, your better camera, such as Nikon, top of the line Canons, uh, have a ball bearing race. Probably some of the other cameras too, too. I have some also, but I don't, uh, can't recall which ones they are. Ball bearing races, you put them where you've got torque, such as uh, 
this right here is the advanced shaft going from here down to here and uh, as you advance the camera there's a lot of torque and uh, on the uh, cheaper cameras they would just drill a hole through the metal polish it and put the shaft through the advanced shaft on the better cameras they would uh, drill a hole and press in a uh, brass bushing and uh, put the shaft through it but on the very best cameras they would uh, drill a hole and put in a ball bearing race and uh, that it would last a long time the cameras that uh, they would just uh, drill a hole and polish it and put a shaft through would work fine but maybe after 10 or 20 years that uh, hole would uh, start um, well what how can i describe it the shaft would move it had play with these ball bearing uh, shafts uh, they uh, that didn't happen of course the ones with uh, uh, brass bushings also lasted longer so it's just how much you paid for the camera as to what kind of shaft you got throughout the camera and there were other places also especially if you had a uh, horizontal shutter there was a lot of those shafts on those uh, other than the advanced shaft and they also can wear out over time Okay, what else? Uh, a lot of plastic in this newer model uh, when they moved up to the twos. Um, FE2, FM2, FM, uh, what, A2? <laughs> or was it just FA? I don't remember. But uh, I noticed that there was more plastic in the shutter mechanism. Like right here, you see. Plastic wheel here. And there's, uh, here's a plastic uh, lever. The shutter worked good. I can't complain about the plastic. I don't like the idea, but uh, plastic in some places works fine. In others, it doesn't. Yeah, I guess it counts in the plastic. I, there's different kinds of plastic, and I don't know one from the other, but I do know that some will get uh, brittle with age. Or with metal, you don't have to worry about that problem. So it might make the difference between a camera lasting 50 years or 100 years. Okay, what else? That's about it. We can look at the base here quickly before we close shop. Uh, advanced lever. You can see that notch there. That's for the uh, motor drive. We've got, um, what else, what else, what else? We've got the uh, hole here for the uh, tripod. We've got the uh, battery case. This is made of plastic. I've seen a lot of these crack. Um, happens in all cameras, though, not just Nikon. Any of the uh, plastic uh, battery holders will eventually crack. The plastic just gets uh, weak, I guess. And as a customer puts in batteries and takes out batteries, it stresses them and they crack. And then here we got the motor drive contacts. Let's see if we can advance it or is it already advanced? No, it's, we can advance it. You can see it there in the bottom. This, uh, right under here the stud here it's pressed in as a shaft and that shaft is charging the shutter which can't really be seen from here okay and there we go this right here is a, a toothpick that i put in there because if you don't have that in there then the camera will not continually advance like this it'll lock uh, when it advances it locks which is what it's supposed to do but when you're repairing them you need to advance the camera over and over as you're checking things so you put a toothpick in there to uh, keep it so it won't lock okay that's pretty much it i think we've covered the uh, fe2 well enough um not very important but um right up here and it's not going to focus for me, is it? There we go. Right up here is uh, some foam. It has to be replaced when you pull out the mirror cage. This foam, this, the viewfinder goes here. And light gets in around the viewfinder. And will get inside the camera. And the film is right here. When you fire the shutter, it's open. So you don't want light getting in from the viewfinder and getting down here and getting on your film. So this foam has to be replaced. It's fairly thick. Um, I've got on two plies there. 
one there and one there uh, because you can't uh, get too much foam in here. You want to make sure that uh, no light gets in around the viewfinder. And I'm rambling. We need to get out of this thing. Okay, that's it on the FE2. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up with a little bit of extra. On most of my videos, I don't. But on this one, it's uh, necessary. And that's to talk about the um, camera. Start at that one right there. The um, Would I buy an FEM, FE2 or FM2? Yes, I would. And I prefer them over the uh, FE and FM, the older ones even though the uh, camera does have its problems. That would be my choice. So if anybody wants an FE or FM, I um, highly recommend them, but do not expect the uh, 2000 or 4000 to be working on the camera that you buy. You can take it to a shop and have them test it, but um, quite often the 1000 will work the 2000 sometimes is working. The 4000 usually is not working on the FM or FE2. On many of these models that you'll just buy on eBay and assume that it's working, but it's not. And so that's just a warning. If you're buying the camera because you uh, like the, that particular camera, uh, go ahead and buy it. I would. But um, I would never buy one assuming that the uh, 2000 and 4000 are working. Unless I took it to a shop and uh, they put it on digital tester and checked it. And you say, well, why? Well, you have to think about it a little here. The, um, the 1,000 is one millisecond. And a millisecond is attainable on mechanical cameras. These are mechanical, not digital. But uh, we're talking mechanical parts here, too. Uh, things that are moving, that are metal, that are in the real world. But um, at 2,000 of a second, that's a half a millisecond. You're pushing it now. You're pushing the edges of what uh, a physical object can do. And when you go to 4,000, you're talking about uh, a quarter of a millisecond. And then you're really pushing it. So out of the factory, yes, the camera's uh, the speeds worked properly. But over years and uh, with wear, the first speed's going to go is the 4,000th of a second. It uh, may not work anymore. Counting on the use of the camera and how it's been stored. The two thousandths of a second might work, but it might be off quite a bit. There's not much room for error. Like uh, on my tester, it might show uh, 1.4 or 1.6. You're, you know, you might get two thousandths of a second out of it. You will get one, uh, one thousandth of a second, a one millisecond. That's easy for a mechanical camera to do, and all of them do. If you'll notice, most of the SLRs you find will go up to one thousandth of a second, but usually not beyond, because then you're really pushing the materials and the design. So I would say I wanted to give you that one warning that um, I do like the camera. I would own one, but you never buy it just because you want these two speeds unless you take the camera to a shop and they put it on a digital camera and um, digital camera, a digital tester and test it for you and tell you that those speeds are working properly. Like I said, most of the time the 2000 might be working, the 4000 usually not on these older cameras. Anyway, that's what I wanted to warn you about in case you're interested in buying um, an FM2 or FE2 or an FA, and uh, which also has this, the to uh, make sure that uh, you know, you understand that the 2000, 4000 may not be working on the camera that you buy. All right, that's it. I'm tired. I got to get this thing back together. My uh, 10 minute videos, which I originally had planned on making, are turning into uh, 20 minute videos. Oh, well, that's just life. Um, we had the tour of the um, FE2. You um, saw the mirror cage and um, kind of got to see the ICs uh, where the uh, cameras went at that time. The, uh, the uh, modular shutter, which uh, has those shutter blades. I think they were titanium, but I don't remember. And uh, it was a selling point at the time. Well, bend very easily, and you should never touch them. If you own the camera and if you buy the camera, make sure you do not touch them and you're, uh, keep your distance from them. 
because uh, if you bend them, the cameras run. The shutter will have to be replaced. And uh, what else, what else? I'm rambling here. Um, oh, shutter speeds. Shutter speeds, 2,000 and 4,000, may or may not be working on the camera that you own or the one you buy. You will only know by taking it to a shop that has um, a top-notch uh, digital shutter tester that can test it for you and let you know if they're working or not. So uh, that pretty well covers it. Until next time, later.